Welcome back to our recorded video sermon. And I would like to just thank the Lord for all the things that He has done in our life. I believe that God is faithful in your life, in my life, and uh, sa ating lahat. Alam ko po na ang bawat isa sa atin ay hindi pinabayaan ng Panginoon. And uh, sa mga bago po, ay gusto ko pong uh, ipaalam din sa inyo na ang ating hangarin sa pagbibigay ng uh, mensahe ng Panginoon is to equip each one, especially the believers, that they will be equipped and uh, makilala pa nila ng lubusan ang Panginoon. And to those people, my friends, na wala pa nga relasyon sa ating Panginoon, ang akin pong hangarin ay makilala nyo po ang ating Panginoon at magkaroon kayo ng relasyon sa kaya Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, today we are in James chapter 1 verses 26 and 27, the last verse or last two verses ng ating uh, series ng chapter 1. And uh, hopefully, we can continue and we can finish uh, the whole book of James. I believe po na ang, uh, ang libro ni Santiago ay akma po sa ating uh, panahon sapagkat ang mga Jewish believers were under persecution and uh, they, are, they experienced trouble, anxiety. We are not under persecution but I believe katulad din nila nakaranas din tayo ng mga pag-aalinlangan, anxiety, troubles, uncertainties sa ating uh, hinaharap. But as, as what I have said that the word of God is our guide. Ito yung magbibigay sa atin ng uh, direction. That's why inaanyayahan ko po kayo. Just give me not more than 30 minutes to share to you of the Word of God. Let us begin, and I would like to read to you the last two verses ng ating pag-aaral ng chapter 1 ng James that says, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows, in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. I want us to understand that in this passage, the word religion here does not talk about our sect or denomination. Hindi po tinutukoy dito yung uh, kung anong relihiyon mo. But the word religion here talks about our, our act of worship. Ito po yung... Uh, Totoong meaning. Uh, sa original, uh, ang ibig sabihin ng religion na ito ay yung worship. Now, believers and followers of the Lord, since this book was written for the Jewish believers, ito ay para sa mga uh, mananampalataya, we must have a genuine kind of worship even in the midst of troubles. In Jesus' day, He condemns people who only demonstrate godliness for others to see. Now, this is not new in our time. Yung pagpapakitang tao, uh, pagpapakitang gilas, we may appear godly, but deep inside, we are wicked. In Jesus' day, marami na pong ganyang klaseng tao. Let's Take, for example, yung Matthew chapter 6, ang sabi ni Jesus Christ, verse 1, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Verse 2, Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in their synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Christ is giving them warning not to brag when they help for others. Now, sa ating panahon ngayon, uh, 
kung napapansin natin ay uh, yung mga food packs, pinipicturan, and nilalagay sa social media. I do not know kung ano yung intention ng iba, but sabi ng Panginoon, I, I am not in the position to judge you, but ang sabi ng Panginoon ay beware. Tayo'y mag-ingat for you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And in verse 5, another warning. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Sabi niya, verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your, your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So when you pray, wag mong i-display ang iyong sarili that it's as if you are so religious. And another in verse 16, ang sabi niya, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Jesus' point here is when we don't have to announce what we do for the Lord. We don't have to brag on the things that we actually do not own. Some people manifest outward goodness, but their heart is not actually in tune with God. They just want to appear righteous, but they practice wickedness when they're alone. No wonder James warns and exhorts the Jewish believers to not be hypocrites, but have a genuine kind of worship before the Lord, even in their troubles. When this pandemic first started, I remember that most everyone wants to hear the word of the Lord. Halos lahat ng mga kakilala ko. Halos lahat din ng mga uh, Facebook friends ko ay nagpo-post ng mga godly quotes, mga verses, etc. Because they think, not all, but some think that through their kind actions, their uh, goodness, kindness, the situation will be changed. Sometimes, Believers too become godly only in times of distress, difficulties, and troubles. Where is our faith? I wonder if we still have the most genuine worship to the Lord in this time of pandemic. Hindi ko po alam kung yung ating commitment para sa Panginoon ay nandiyan pa din ba? Hindi na tayo gumigising ng uh, maaga para pumunta sa simbahan. But we are, we, we have now the uh, to total freedom to choose kung ano yung oras tayo magsisimba. Last Sunday, I remember one of our uh, members, sabi niya, ang time na binibigay ng Panginoon ay dapat maging good steward din tayo. Hindi lang natin ito basta-basta pag-aksayahan. Yes, marami tayong time. But are we a good steward in our time? Speaking of stewardship, worship sa ating Panginoon, believers and followers of the Lord must have a genuine kind of worship even in the midst of troubles. What is a true, real, or genuine worship to the Lord? In times of calamity. In verse 26, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Number one characteristic na makikita natin sa isang genuine, real worship ay merong pag-control sa kanyang dila. The one who can control his tongue. In verse, or in chapter 3, in the same book ni James, Ang sabi niya, verse 5 and verse 8, So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze 
by such a small fire. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Our tongue, itong ating mga dila, may use in praising when we are in the church, when we are in the congregation. But also, we use it to curse when we are outside, when we are alone. It is easy to appear godly. Madali lang po yung tawagin na makadiyos, madaling magpretend. Sobrang dali. But we cannot control our tongue. Our worship is useless. The Bible would tell us that you will be able to know a person by the words that come out of their mouth. Paano natin malalaman? Matthew chapter 12 verse 34 says, You broad of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Luke 6.45 The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Kung ano ang nilalaman ng puso natin, ito yung sinasabi natin. When our heart is full of lust, ang parati nating sinasabi ay mga kabastusan lamang. Mga hindi magagandang bagay. Kung ang ating heart ay full of corruption, lumalabas din po ito sa ating pananalita. Lumalabas din po ito sa ating mga sinasabi. Now, ang sabi ni William Burkett that it seems that in the days ng, uh, ni Apostle James, maraming mga, hin, mga, mga mananampalataya or mga tao na hindi nila kayang i-control ang kanilang mga dila. Or no wonder James spent the rest of the third chapter talking about the tongue, how to govern it, how to control it. Kasi nga, maraming hindi kayang mag-control ng kanilang mga dila. Ngayon ay mas malala na pong ating uh, generation, ang ating generation. Not only we can hurt someone through our words, but we can hurt someone through using our social media. Yung ating mga hinanakit, yung ating mga uh, gustong i-burst out, dilalagay natin sa ating mga social media. In our time, we can find a lot of people who do not care if they can hurt others. Sabi pa nga niyang iba, as long as nasa tama ako, sasabihin ko. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, if this is our philosophy in life, na wala kang pakialam sa mararamdaman nila as long as nasa tama ka, alam niyo po kung ganito yung ating philosophy sa buhay. We are deceived. We fall into Satan's trap. Bilang isang mga mananampalataya, Christians, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should care for the feelings of others because it is the Lord's command for us. Now, do we have the power, the ability to control our tongue? Tiningnan ko po ang isang article ng God Question. At ang sabi niya about taming the tongue, what is to be done then to tame the tongue? If God has declared that no one can tame the tongue, how can we even begin to do so? The problem of the heart and tongue cannot be solved by human willpower. It takes the power of the resurrected Christ within us to control the tongue. And that power is available only to those who turn their lives over to Him or, or over to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one who can control the tongue only by God's spirit living within us can we hope to gain control over our tongues yes po by our own strength it is impossible to control our tongue that is why we need to surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to have the control of your life and our tongue. If we surrender, if we allow the Lord Jesus Christ to control our lives, He can also control 
our tongue. Kung si Satan ang mag-drive sa buhay mo, devastation is surely it's on your way. But if you allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be the driver of your life, let Him control you, including, including your tongue, blessing, favor, and grace will be upon your life. Now, let me go back to my question. What is a true, real, and genuine worship to the Lord in times of calamity? The one who controls His tongue. Can we do it on our own strength? No. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us surrender our lives to Him para Siya ang mag-control sa buhay natin. I-allow natin na si Jesus Christ ang maging driver sa buhay mo. I-allow po natin ito. The second characteristic of a real, true, genuine worship is He care for others. Let us read verse 27. Ang sabi niya, religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their afflictions. It is a common nature of a person to put himself or his family first before others. It is it bad to think of our family as our top priority. But we must not forget that the greatest command of God for us, Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39, that says, love God, love others. The second command is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, let us go back to our text. Itong verse 27, yung word na visit. The word visit here in this verse, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, means to go to see, to inspect, or a habit of going to see. A real Christian, ang totoong mananampalataya, ang totoong nakakilala sa Panginoon, has a heart for the unfortunate people. The easy-to-read version says in this verse, ang sabi niya, the worship that God wants is this, caring for orphans or widows who need help. I want us to think of the people right now who really need help. How do you feel about our unfortunate brothers and sisters? Ano po yung nararamdaman natin? In, naisipin natin na they really need our help. Comfortable ba tayo? Are we at peace even if we know that they need our help? We are in the most fortunate situation. Meron tayong nakakain, may bahay tayong natutulugan, siguro meron din tayong uh, masarap na pagkain, but how about our brothers and sisters na walang kinakain, na naghihirap? Ano po yung nararamdaman natin? Be not a hearer of God's word, but be doer. How can we not imitate the church in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2 when everyone sold their possessions and distributed it to the poor and needy? It is my prayer that as a young church, Christian Baptist Fellowship of Mandaluyong will imitate the example of Jerusalem Church. Meron tayong concern sa mga kapatiran natin who really needs our help. Sabi ni Theodore Roosevelt, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. But sa lahat ng quote, ito yung pinakagusto ko. Ang sabi ni Jesus Christ in John chapter 13, verse 35, By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Ang ating pagmamahal sa ating kapwa ay isang palatandaan na ikaw ay disciple ni Jesus Christ. Ikaw ay tagasunod ni Heso Kristo. It is my prayer na lahat tayo will always 
no? Lahat tayo mag-strive na sundin ang utos ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. This should be our identity. Caring and loving followers of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, what is a true, real, or genuine worship to the Lord in times of calamity? Verse 27 pa rin tayo. To visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Number three characteristic is spotless from the world's vices or spotless from the world. We are exhorted over and over not to forget our real destination. Most of the time, it's as if we are citizen of this world. Nakalimutan po natin na lahat tayo ay mga, mga turista lamang sa sanlibutan na ito. We forget that we are chosen by God to be with Him and not of this world. John chapter 15 verse 19, it says, If you belong to the world, the world would love you as it loves its own people. But I have chosen you to be different from those in the world, so you don't belong to the world, and that is why the world hates you. Therefore, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must not be lured. Wag po tayong magpaloko sa mundo. Sa mga uh, inu-offer ng ating mundo, wag tayong magpaloko, wag tayong mapalin lang. What we experience here on earth is not lasting but temporary. We must invest for eternity. Strive na sundin ang ating Panginoon. Therefore, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, mga kamanan ng palataya, we must prepare ourselves to be pure, clean, and blameless. Be very careful not to prioritize the world. Things that can or things that distracts you from God. Ang sabi ng 1 John, don't love this evil world or the things in it. If you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Yes, we are in the world, but not of the world. We should know the difference and take your stand. In conclusion, a pure worship has controlled tongue, care for others, and spotless from the world's vices. In application, we can, number one, speak life. Hindi lang yung mga paninira, hindi lang backbiting, hindi lang negativity, hindi lang reklamo, hindi lang uh, murmuring, but speak life. Number two, serve the needy. It is my prayer na ito yung ating magiging identity as a Christian who loves and care for others. And number three, not only to speak life, serve the needy, but surrender life. Let us surrender our lives to the Lord. As I close, sa ating mga pamilya, atin po itong i-discuss itong mga question na ito. What are the practical ways we can do to, no, letter A, restrain from speaking evil towards authority and colleagues? Number two, what are the practical ways we can do to care for family, friends, and others in need? And number three, what are the practical ways we can do to become and remain spotless from the pleasures of this temporal world. Brethren, it is my prayer na lahat tayo ay mag-grow sa ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Nawa na ang lahat sa inyo ay patuloy pa rin nagsusumikap na sundin ang gusto ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. Brethren in the Lord, my friends, stay at home, stay safe, and stay fit. God bless po sa inyong lahat.